Use the father son height summary data below to form a 90% confidence interval for the true slope beta 1 for the linear relationship between a father's height and the height of his son. What does the interval indicate? Okay, so they give us some summary data below, but we need to do a lot more work on this set of numbers in order to get the data necessary to complete the confidence interval. So, first thing we should identify is they ask us to form a 90% confidence interval for the slope beta 1. Okay, so we're doing a confidence interval and it's for the slope. First thing you want to do then is to write down the important piece of information for the problem. So again, this is our data step and it's the most difficult step in the confidence interval for this particular topic. So sometimes it's easy and sometimes it's diff more difficult than the other steps. In this case, it's the most dis difficult step of the process. So what we have to do, of course, is identify the n. We'll need that later. We're also going to need to identify our alpha in the problem. Alpha here is 10% because the confidence level is 90. So we'll call that point uh, one zero. And of course, we'll do alpha divided by two for this problem because it's a confidence interval and we do them with two tails or two sides in this course. All right, so here's data. We have the n, the alpha. The rest of it is gonna come from these sum of squares values and we're going to use them to form certain items that we need for the confidence interval. The most important one we're going to do first is the slope estimator beta 1 hat. So we need to do SSXY over SSXX, right? So the mixed term over the X term. The sum of square XY is going to be 41.173 repeating divided by 160.93 repeating. Okay, so let's work that out with our calculator and see what result we come up with. So I have 41.1733333 divided by 160.9333333. Okay, so when we're done, we end up with the answer 0 0.25584000. Dot, dot, dot. So I'm going to save that value in my calculator. I'm going to store it under B. So I'm going to store under alpha B in my calculator, so store it under the letter B. If you don't have a store feature on your calculator, just write down enough decimal places that you don't have to round too much later on. Okay, so I have my beta 1. The next step of the process is to get the sum of squares for error. That's SS, SSE. I almost wrote SEE. -E. <laughs> it's SSE in the problem. Okay, so let's get the sum of square for error. The formula is SSYY. Then it'll be minus the beta 1 hat value times SSXY. Okay, so SSYY, you can find here, it's given to us. It's 124.1493 repeating minus that slope value that we just had, which was 0.2558 dot 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 times the um, sum of squares for the mixed term, which we actually have at the top of that fraction there, that's 41.173 repeating. All right, now when you're done with that, that'll give us the sum of square for error, so SSE. Okay, let's see what that turns out to be now in our calculator. So we will have 124.1493 repeating minus the value that we have above there, this slope value, times 41.173 repeating. All right, and when we're done, we get the answer 113.6155095. Okay, so that's our sum of square for error. Now we're gonna take that value and we're gonna use it in our next step of the process, which is to come up with the S value. This is the standard deviation for the error term in the problem, and that is going to be basically SSE over N minus 2. So that for us is going to be 113.6155095, all divided by 15 minus 2, because our N is 15. Take away 2, we have 13. And then we're going to do the square root of that. Okay, so I have in my calculator 113.61, so on and so forth. I already have that value in there. I'm going to divide it by 13, the degrees of freedom. I'm going to raise that to the half power, which is the same as taking the square root. And when I'm done, I get the answer 2.95629 dot dot dot, right? On and on and on. Okay, at that point, what I want to do is to take that S value and divide it now by a certain quantity, the square root of the sum of square for xx, and that's going to give me the part that's most important for me here, which is the uh, 
standard error for beta 1 hat. Okay, so standard error for beta 1 hat is my next and final step in the data process. I'll divide s by the square root of s, s, x, x. And in this case, that's going to be 2.95629 dot 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 divided by the square root of the SSXX value, which is 160.93 repeating. Okay, let's see what that gives me when I do that. Now I already have that S value still sitting in my calculator. So I'm going to divide that by the square root of this 160.933333. Close the parenthesis up, hit enter, and it's going to give me 0 0.233036. Dot, dot, dot. Now, I'm going to store that in my calculator under the variable s. I'm going to store that under alpha s. This way I have my, um, my beta 1 hat under b and my standard error for beta 1 hat under s. Those are the two important quantities we need for the next steps of the problem. Okay, so the data step is done. Let's go now and get our critical table value. So I'll get another sheet of paper because I need some space to work and we'll come back and finish that. Okay, our next step is to get the table value, our critical table value, t alpha divided by 2. Now in our case, alpha is 10%, so if we divide it in half, it's going to be 0 0.05 then, right? And the degrees of freedom for the problem, it's going to be n take away 2 for this problem, which will be 13. Okay, so we have our alpha, we have our degrees of freedom, it's time to go to our table now and get the actual value from the table. So we're going to go to the 0 0.05 column and go down to 13 degrees of freedom. Let's go do that right now and find out what that critical value is. Okay, so we're looking for 0.05 in one tail, and we're going to go down to degrees of freedom 13. So that's 1.771. Okay, so we found our critical table value to be 1.771. All right, so the next step of our problem after getting the critical table value is to calculate the margin of error. That's actually quite easy here because the formula is only t alpha divided by 2 times the standard error of our point estimator beta 1 hat. So the standard error of beta 1 hat is this symbol. And we know that we've already calculated that value, so it's just a matter of plugging in the numbers. So 1.771 times this value, which is approximately 0 0.233. Of course, I'm going to use the full value, so I'm going to go ahead and take that from my calculator, which I've basically programmed with this value already because I stored it in my variable s. So I'm going to have 1.771 times, and again, I've stored that in my calculator under the variable s, so I get the answer 0 0.4127. 0 0.4127. So 0 0.4127. Two seven zero dot dot dot. I'm going to actually store that in my calculator, that error term. I'm going to store it under the variable x. And the reason why I want to do that is because I want to make sure that when I go to use it for the final step of the process, I'm not rounding too much. Of course, as long as you keep a few decimal places, you know, 41270 is actually probably enough to be safe to avoid any rounding error. But I've gone ahead and stored that in my calculator already under x. So our next step then is to take that answer and add and subtract it to our point estimator. Now in this problem, our point estimator is beta 1 hat. So we'll subtract the error from that, and then beta 1 hat plus the error is what we will do. Now our beta 1 hat value is this value, so basically our formula will be something like 0 0.256, let's say, minus the error, and then 0 0.256 plus the error. So I've rounded it a little bit there. I actually have the full number in my calculator though. So I'm just going to do alpha b minus the error, which I program plugged into x, and then the same calculation, but I'll put plus there afterwards. All right, so I get the following interval. I find that this interval is from negative 0 0.157 up until uh, 0 0.669. So that's my interval. And if I wrote this in a different way, it'll be easier to interpret perhaps. Basically, I'm saying that my population parameter beta 1, or the true population slope, is somewhere between this value and this value. 
All right, now what happens is that if the interval goes from negative to positive, our interpretation is different from the scenario where they're both negative or the scenario where both limits are positive. If both limits are positive, we think that that implies positive linear correlation or positive linear relationship. And if they're both negative, it implies a negative linear relationship. When they go from negative to positive, it means that zero is within that range of values. So right now, you know, we're 90% confident that the true slope is somewhere between these two numbers, but one of the numbers that's in between these two numbers is zero. So let's say, for example, that beta one, if it actually did take on the value of zero, if that was the number it was actually equal to, that would imply there's zero linear relationship or no linear relationship. It would imply the slope is zero, which means that the x variable doesn't contribute any useful information in predicting y. So at that point, we would basically say, you know, as far as a linear relationship goes, the interval is implying that there's no um, significant evidence to support the idea that there's a linear relationship.